This is where the sharpest ideas are forged. And some wonky ones too. It's our New Year's episode, so amid all the merrymaking, I'll be the party pooper, because today we will discuss who's allowed to joke about what. A few years ago, people complained about political correctness. Today the call is on cancel culture. It sometimes goes as far as show business billionaires complaining about how they just can't say things anymore because women or trans people or abuse survivors, sometimes even homeless folks and other tyrants just won't know how to take a joke. I grew up with a lot of, you know, white friends, but all my white friends had one non-white friend. <laughs> and, uh... Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think comedy suffers when you only have like one type of perspective, you know what I mean? Like, migration is part of the human condition. Everybody is a migrant, which is objectively not true. Comedy as a genre is probably the most honest way of, of portraying what our current societal values are. What is yellow and plays the guitar? John Lemon. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> See? She asked See? for it. Proof that even in academia. <laughs> <laughs> When somebody you feel like are going too far, what is the line for you that you wouldn't want to tolerate or wouldn't necessarily prefer having on your stage? Um, to be honest, I, as a matter of policy at the Comedy Pub, don't want to tell, ever tell anybody what they can joke about or not. Because stand-up comedy is a very direct uh, art form. You do a joke, it's either funny or it's not, and you get instant feedback from the, from the audience. I think a lot of the time you have to actually, one, know something about that background that's not just a shallow, surface-level understanding of, of, uh, of their identity. And because I feel like a lot of the time uh, the tension is broken when you make a joke that could potentially be offensive when it's actually smart. Like, people don't get mad about offensive jokes when they're funny. That's, that's the truth. It's, people don't get mad about offensive jokes if they're like smart and well-written. Funny is like a moving goalpost and then there's an element of witty that we expect yes, in a joke. Yes, that's what to I be, mean. To have a bit more of a depth, not necessarily like deep in this dramatic sense, but yeah. have a bit of a yeah. nuance that we recognize, have, yeah. a, have an edge. Exactly. And, and the punchline, I would hope, that, that the punchline we expect today would go beyond, <laughs> it turns out they were gay, yeah, or something like this, exactly. right? Humor changes, but in general, sort of the cultural repertoire that people have changes, and as you said, it changes very quickly. I don't think anyone has tried to sort of cancel Eddie Murphy for that, right? So it's like, okay, it's something that you thought was funny at the time, we don't do that anymore, and, but we have to renegotiate the present. How do we treat certain texts from the past that we still read which contain offensive words. With, like, you know, Shakespeare, uh, specifically about Jews and women. Yeah. You can't change the past. You can't change what people wrote at the time. Of course, you can recontextualize it, but you cannot and you should not sort of try and change this and make it sort of um, digestible mm -hmm. for the present. Because it's, you know, at least as an historian, I would say, you know, you, you shouldn't tamper with your sources. I never thought I was a Karen. Which is not <laughs> great way not to a, start a sentence. <laughs> by the way. You can be named Karen. You just should not be a Karen. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, Karen is just a state of mind. It's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs>